Good evening. Thank you so much for joining us today for the second webinar for Advocacy Day 2023, um, Empowering Advocacy Through Storytelling. I'm, I'm Ayana Imiskarai, you she, her pronouns. I'm a manager of special projects um, at AIDS Foundation Chicago within the Policy and Advocacy Department, as well as uh, Pride Action Tank. And I'm joined today by my lovely co uh, I'll say co host, uh, co presenter, Kim Hunt, who will allow to introduce herself. I like the co host thing. It's like a dinner party, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm Kim Hunt, she, her pronouns. Um, I am the executive director of Pride Action Tank, which is a project of AIDS Foundation Chicago. And I'm also uh, the senior director of policy and advocacy operations here. And uh, welcome, welcome to to the storytelling webinar. Yes, we're so excited um, to get into this next hour with all of you, um, really get um, our roots into some storytelling. Um, before we do that, I want to introduce some learning objectives before um, that we want to achieve by the end of the hour. Um, if the slide deck will go, there we are. Um, so the first one is to identify which policy priorities um, you all will advocate for on Advocacy Day 2023. Our second objective is to craft individualized micro stories, what we call them, um, using the elements of storytelling for advocacy. And then uh, lastly, practice speaking to respective representatives and senators. Um, and really, I think this point is to also just allow you, allow you all a little bit of space to ask questions um, um, to figure out how it's gonna all work out on the day up. So um, to warm us up into the storytelling piece, I'm gonna pass the mic back to Kim, who's, gonna, who's going to lead us into the warm up. Yeah, yeah, so we're gonna jump right into storytelling. Uh, I think many of you on this call know that uh, for about eight years, I co-hosted Outspoken, um, which is a storytelling uh, program at Sidetrack once a month that is still going on. I'm just not the co-host anymore. Uh, and we do a lot of storytelling uh, at AFC and within Pride Action Tank and, and find it to be super important to um, the work that we do in advocacy. So for this exercise, you're going to need something to collect your thoughts on. It could be, um, you know, the notepad, a word, a blank word document, um, you know, whatever you want, pen and paper, that's my favorite thing, um, because you're gonna be responding to some prompts and you'll have 60 seconds per response and you'll start each response with I am from. I am gonna model this for you because I've done this exercise um, a number of times and this is not something I made up. Uh, this comes from a number of places, most, most recently in my experience with the Aspen uh, Young Leaders Fellowship Program, which I have the pleasure of, of working on in my spare time, whatever that means. Um, so I'm gonna model and then everybody's gonna do this exercise and, and don't cheat and not do it or wander off and do something else. I know how we are with these webinars where we multitask. Don't multitask, pay attention, it's only an hour. <laughs> so here's a version of I am from, uh, from my perspective, from um, exercise that I did a, a few years ago. I am from the union of Ronald Carlos Hunt and Pinky LaVon Banks, both of whom were rooted in the Southern foods of ham hocks, greens, and fried chicken, but short-term marriages pressured by the ways of Northern folks. I am from block parties and bid whisk games laced with the smells of fried catfish, Motown songs and stories on hot summer porches lit by fireflies and mosquito bites. I am from get in the house before the street lights come on and don't talk back to adults and I love you. I am from Saturday trips to the library that cultivated my ongoing love of reading and loving and doing. I am from two long church services and summer Bible studies book ended by loud parties with the people we were supposed to pray for and who gave me life. I am from women who saw a need and made it happen, fed people, nursed people, cursed people out and loved them hard and showed me that everyone is worthy. I am from a yearning to ensure that my people, my kids, my wife, my family, chosen and by birth and the people who I don't know can build from where they're from. 
So that's a version of my I am from. <laughs> Thank you. Anna. I have to give this now, and I want people to hear it because that was beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. So you won't have as many prompts as I did. Oh, thank you. Oh, I love this love in the chat. More of that, please. Um, I had quite a few prompts that I worked from. You're only going to get four. Uh, and you're going to have 60 seconds to respond um, to each prompt. So if folks are ready, thank you, Solomon. I didn't see you come in the room. Hey. Uh, and thank you, Jill. I can't say thank you to everybody. Thank you. <laughs> so if folks are ready with your writing implement or whatever you're going to start with, um, we are going to get started again. You're going to have a prompt. When you respond, you start with I am from and whatever your response is, you'll have 60 seconds each time. Here we go. Ayana, go ahead and put up the first one. I am from familiar foods, especially those associated with family gatherings. 60 seconds, starting with I am from. It's so weird when we can't see or hear anybody. <laughs> Thirty seconds. All right, next prompt, please. I am from sights, sounds, and smells from your neighborhood. 60 seconds. Thirty seconds. Next prompt, please. I am from familiar sayings heard repeatedly growing up. 60 seconds to respond with your thoughts. Thirty seconds. And our last prompt, please. I am from familiar people, family members, friends, and ancestors. 60 seconds.
30 seconds. Okay. Now, we are using the webinar version of Zoom, which means we can't break you all up into smaller groups to have your you share your stories. So what we would like is for a few brave souls to volunteer to share your story with the group. And I think you can raise your hand and we can take you off mute uh, so that you can share. And let me say, we are not looking for perfection. Look at Solomon is ready. We're not looking for perfection. You do not have to qualify your story. It is your story. So do not apologize for your story. All right. Solomon, let's let's start with with you. Oh, you put it in the chat, but you can can you read? Yeah, that? I'm gonna read it too. I'm gonna okay. read it too, but I just I appreciate some that are more visual and would rather read than. Oh, good point. Uh, with my antics, I have a lot of personality and energy. Okay, so I'm gonna read this um, the way I feel it, but also the way I wrote it. I am Thanksgivings that culturally contradict from tasty healthy. Tasty to unhealthy, affirming to unnerving, and spicy to water down. I am from musicians of the blues genre, house music of my generation, and ballroom music in my heart. I am from brisk winds on the lakefront in Hyde Park and the echo chamber of being unapologetically Black. I am from the era of ain't, ain't nobody on time but Jesus, realizing that love is love, that I can be gay and a child of God, and that fat means greasy. I'm from a lineage of educators, musicians, and Black people alike that have paved the way from desegregating schools and concerts to helping legalize marriage equality. I am queen mother, mother of my house, and home. Hello. Yes. Let's show Solomon some love in the chat. I think y'all got reactions. Maybe not. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, look at all that love coming at you, Solomon. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, can we get at least one more person to share? Thank you, Solomon, that was awesome. Let's get another hand up. Oh, I love seeing all this love. See, y'all don't know, doing the webinar version, we can't see, we can't hear. So seeing all this love in the chat, <laughs> that means so much. One more brave soul. Oh, we got three brave oh, souls. Three more brave souls. Okay, we'll take these three. You do them in any order, Ayana. You're in, you, I don't know what's going on. You do it. I think Diego's got that. Um, so whatever order you got them in, Diego. <laughs> Lonnie, I think you should be able to speak. I have you on. Oh, okay. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. I am from turkey and dressing, potatoes are garden, string beans, sweet potato pie, salad, please, something to drink, all made with love. The cook is now tired, but going strong. I am from fest, from front porch parties, neighbors loving on each other, and sweet smelling cakes. I'm also from, don't play with me. If nobody loves you, mom and daddy loves you. But you got one more time to blank, blank, blank. That's my boy. Get it, Lonnie. I am from the Legion, my church family. Rose, Duke, Juan, Jennifer, Robin, Grandma, and Bertha Butt. Lonnie, yes, thank you. That was 
wonderful. Y'all making me hungry too. I'm say. <laughs> I don't know what I'm eating tonight because I got another meeting after this. <laughs> so fantastic. I think we had two more hands, right? Keep showing the love in the chat, y'all. You got it, Diego? I see one hand. Yes. Uh, uh, Wayne Ramirez, I think you should be able to talk now. Um, can you guys hear me? Yes. We can. All right. All right. Um, and I put, I am from Puerto Rican rice, roasted pork, pasteles, flan, potato salad, and Kool-Aid. I'm from the rows of the building of the project, reggaeton music, playing gunshots and laughter and young people throwing rocks. I'm from keeping your nose out of grown folks' business. Take this note to the store for cigarettes. You're grounded. And where's your report card? I'm from RuPaul, Jerry Springer, multi-generational household, Afro-Caribbean people, Tainos, and American dream speakers. Oh, my goodness. That was so good. So, so good. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Beautiful, beautiful. And I think we have one more. The love, the love, the love in the chat is beautiful. I don't see any more hands no up more? right now. Okay. So no worries. Any more. All right. Thank you for your assist, Diego. Uh, and thank you all for sharing. I know it can be a little like, mm, I don't know if I'm going to put my story out there, but you did. You are all natural storytellers. Everybody has at least one story. We know everybody has many stories. Uh, you have demonstrated uh, your ability to write a story. So when it comes to this next phase, don't say you don't have a story, you got a story. I'll also say that, you know, what we're doing with the I am from is a little bit longer, right, than what you would do with a legislator. And shameless plug, um, Pride Action Tank, uh, the policy and advocacy department in general have various opportunities throughout the year for storytelling training in this longer form that can also be whittled down to smaller, shorter stories or the micro stories that Ayana talked about. And we're going to start shifting into creating micro stories after Ayana gives us a little bit of an overview of the elements of storytelling. Next. How's that for a nice segue? Yeah. <laughs> We're killing it on the segues, Kim. Um, thank you so much um, for leading us in that exercise. I, I always so much enjoy doing this exercise with folks because it's, people are telling their stories and, and um, you know, putting themselves out there and that, that never gets old, um, right? And it could be the same group of people telling different stories. It could be different groups telling other stories. Um, and again, uh, I hope, I encourage you all really to use this fuel uh, for how we move into storytelling for advocacy and um, as Kim is saying, into our micro stories, right? Um, again, and then just to emphasize as well that the difference here is that we're not gonna have all the time that we, we would like to engage with our representatives. Um, so I think the question is how do we become effective um, in engaging with them? So uh, what we'd like to do is, is dive a little bit deeper into some of these elements of storytelling for advocacy. Um, but before we do that, I want to talk a little bit about why it's important, uh, why storytelling is so important in advocacy, right? So the first piece is that it elicits empathy, um, right? It's, it's so much better um, than um, how facts and statistics do, right? I think we can all probably relate to seeing or hearing someone say, oh, this percentage of this, or here's this fact about um, this town or, or this issue, right? Um, and they're super important, right? This is not to diminish facts or statistics, but when we're talking to other folks and especially our electeds, um, our storytelling is gonna be so much more impactful, so much more powerful. Um, and then again, it's gonna elicit some empathy from them. The second piece is it's a great motivator um, that can lead people to action, right? I think that's the that's the big piece, right? And we can all relate to this when we've all um, heard a story, told a story, right? There are people who get inspired, influenced, um, and and it can often lead us to say, you know what, I'm actually going to do this now, right? And I think it's that that I'm going to do, right? I'm not going to just sit back and be passive. And then the third and fourth piece kind of run together, but um, it's storytelling and stories are inherently persuasive, 
and they reduce resistance to new ideas. So again, these all kind of overlap in, in a lot of ways, um, but they're really pulling at the heartstrings here. Um, and when folks are hearing stories, um, it, it humanizes some of these issues that we keep talking about on a higher level, right? And so when we're telling our stories and, and uh, opening ourselves up to other people, um, these new ideas or these ideas that they might not um, say that they agree with, um, those get lessened a little bit and there's opportunity for them to open up and say, you know what, actually, let me let me give this a second thought. And so with, with these parts of, of why storytelling is so important, um, I, I invite you all to kind of remember, to recall some of the greatest stories that you've heard or maybe some of the stories that you've told, right? Um, and ask yourself, in what ways were you transported, right? A lot of ways stories can do that. Um, brings us as audience members, as people who are just listening to get absorbed, right? We start seeing scenes and I saw in the chat, people were like, oh, I love this image of this. I love the smell. That's what we're really getting from the I am from, right? So again, that transportability um, is what happens with storytelling. And then it's the relatability piece with this as well. So we're starting to see each other as uh, fellow humans, as other persons, um, and we begin to find pieces that we can relate to um, with one another. And then lastly, there's the emotionality piece. And again, that empathy, um, it starts to call us in to say, hey, like we all have emotions. Where can we connect on that level? Um, where can we feel and, and empathize, right? And ultimately, again, it's, it's just an opportunity. I think these moments when we're talking to our electeds, um, it's an opportunity to connect with them. Um, I think it, at least for me, I'll speak for myself, when I think of electeds, representatives, senators, things like that, it's such a big name. I feel like that that causes a barrier for me, right? Um, but it's important to remember, oh, they're people too. Um, they have feelings, they have stories, they have experiences that they probably would like to share with you as well. Um, and so that's that's really important to bring this into that, <clears throat> into that space. All right, so let's go ahead and, and jump into some of these elements. Um, I'm gonna summarize all of them and then we'll go into them uh, one by one. But the first element is set the stage. Then we wanna describe and convey the struggle. Um, after we convey that struggle, we wanna highlight a turning point and then we wanna reach closure, right? So all four of these are very integral uh, for one another. Um, and I, I like to think of it in this way in the sense of, how many of us have gone into a movie or um, a TV show and, and just like right in the middle, maybe it's like episode three of like a show that you really love. You're like, wait, how did we get here? What's happening here? Or maybe you came to the movies late and um, you're just wondering like, what is happening? Why are they saying this? Maybe they're getting into a fight and you're like, whoa, how did we get here, right? Um, so again, we wanna make sure we're setting that stage, making sure people are understanding like, how are we entering this story? Um, what is the challenge? Um, where is it turning? Um, I think I, I took a lot of English literature classes uh, and creative writing. So there's always that kind of climax. And then I always think of it like a hill, right? And then you want to reach closure. Um, so we'll go ahead and um, <clears throat> get into each piece here. Um, and the way we have it, or the way that we've set it up is, um, I've just essentially given you an example. Um, and so again, setting the stage. So here we have, hi, I'm representative, uh, high representative or senator so-and-so. My name's Ayana Miskrai, I work at AFC, and I wanted to speak with you about the Healthcare Provider Cultural Competency Bill, HB 2280 or SB 2427. So what I've done here is say, hey, you don't know me, here's my name, here's what I do, um, here's the reason why I'm speaking to you. It gives them an idea of like, okay, where is this starting and where is it relatively going to end, right? And this might also be a really good time for you to emphasize maybe some of the work that you've done, whether that's paid or volunteer, um, things that you maybe you've previously advocated for that might relate to the bill that you're currently trying to address. Um, and additionally, maybe any kind of background that's, um, that, that, that's important for them to know um, that's about you or the work that's being done, right? And then again, off, uh, after setting the stage, we're gonna go ahead and convey the struggle. So with this specific example, I could say, as a trans woman, it means so much to me to have healthcare providers who understand my needs and know how to respect me based on my intersecting identities. For a long time, I put off receiving gender affirming care and other services because I didn't wanna face the possibility of transphobic microaggressions and discrimination from doctors and nurses. So the route I took here was very personal, right? I'm telling them, 
why I wasn't able to access care, who it was that I was, you know, wh wh where the fear was actually kind of coming from, who I was thinking of when that fear was uh, occurring, right? Um, but the this is a chance for, um, what do I want to say? Um, it doesn't have to be a personal story, right? Um, you get to choose what you, what parts of the story you want to tell, um, and whether or not you actually want to tell your story. So maybe in the work that you've done, um, or the people you've met, um, you you know people who are heavily impacted by, let's say, this specific bill in terms of cultural competency from healthcare providers, or any of the other bills. You are more than empowered to share some of those stories, of course, with the consensus of the people that they pertain to. Um, but this is really a time again to show um, where the challenges have been, um, and if it's a if it's a bill that they you know uh, the representative is already kind of um, um, advocating for, just telling them like, oh, if this were to pass, like this great thing would happen, right? These people would be able to get to access care. All right. Then after conveying the struggle, we want to highlight a turning point. So for this, I would I could say I started going to Howard Brown Health Center because I knew the providers would give me the care I needed while also creating that inclusive space that I needed to affirm my gender identity and, and allow me to move forward in my, um, in my journey um, to achieving the self that I see, right? So again, it's a turning point. It's saying, here's the struggle. Here's where I was kind of left off. Um, but here was this opportunity and I took it up and it, it's now taking me to a really, really great place. So now that we've highlighted that turning point, we've gotten over the hill, um, we want to reach that closure. So that could look like saying having culturally competent providers is necessary because it reduces barriers to individuals seeking quality care. So really now we're saying is, I said in the beginning, this is the bill I wanted to talk to you about, and here's why it's important, right? And then you absolutely, absolutely want to end with an ask, right? You don't ever really want to leave a conversation with your electeds um, without an ask, and it should be um, a close-ended yes or no. You don't want to leave them kind of, you know, going off about something, um, and then that might just it might just get a little too convoluted. So you always want to end with, can I count on you to support HB 2280? Or will you support or sponsor this bill? Will you vote against such and such bill that, that get, goes against my rights, right? Um, something like that, where they would absolutely just say, yes, I will do that. No, I won't do that, right? So um, those are the four um, elements. And I'm going to go back really quick just to summarize again. So we're setting the stage. We're describing and conveying the struggle, we're highlighting that turning point, and then we're reaching that closure with that ask. All right. Um, and at this point, I'm going to turn the mic back to Kim to give us one more example, um, just so you all have a little bit more to kind of work with once you start getting into your stories. And here's everything together on one slide, and you can see it's not really that many words, and, but there is a story here. So in this example, um, the story is, hello, Representative Tarver, Senator Peters, those are my electeds in my district. My name is Kim Hunt. I'm the Executive Director of um, uh, Policy and Advocacy at AFC, and I want to speak with you about strengthening and protecting Illinois' HIV funding infrastructure, and that's House Bill 1349, uh, Senate Bill 209. As someone who works with federally qualified health centers to increase capacity on HIV care programming, I see how funding opportunities allow HIV care teams to adequately serve their communities. And without it, people living with HIV have less access to medical, behavioral health, and wraparound services that are crucial to meeting their health needs. Can I count on your support for these bills? So here, um, it wasn't personal in the way that Ayana's story was personal. It was more tied to the work that I do, but it's still my story, right? Um, so that's what I'm just saying. You can really choose what you want to tell, um, what frame you want to use. It can be a very personal story like hers. Or it could be a story that is related to what I get paid to do, for example. So I know that there are some folks from provider agencies on the call who um, 
might, might want to reach out to their elected, elected officials. So this is a route that you could go. But as a, uh, a human being, <laughs> I could also uh, talk about my experiences um, with with healthcare or healthcare that isn't as uh, affirming as it could be, right? And healthcare that isn't adequate. Uh, in terms of resources, uh, as it could be, if we are making sure that um, we are having proper funding for, for all the services that are needed. So you, you definitely have options here. And I think it's just crucial to repeat. You can share as much or as little as you want. So don't feel like you have to put your whole life in these uh, one minute stories um, for like this. Awesome. Thanks, Kim. And I'm also seeing in the chat that folks are getting a bit of an echo feedback for some reason. I'm also kind of getting the echo feedback, but I can hear you okay. So I think it should be. It, it might have been because both of us were off mute. I don't know. Sometimes, Sometimes that, that happens. happens. Yeah. 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 Okay. If anyone is having trouble, Hearing either of us, uh, just let us know, and then we can try to move that forward. Um, cool. Um, I think the next piece is best practices. So uh, I um, see a question in the Jill chat. Jill has a question. question. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Jill is asking: Is it best to talk to the reps that you are that are where you live, or can you talk to the reps from where you work? Um, I'm not actually know. I don't know the best answer to that. Kim, can you guys on that? Um, I would say it depends on um, what the point of the story is or what it is that you're trying to get the rep to do. Um, if it's a, a bill, for example, where you don't have necessarily personal uh, experience uh, that relates, but you uh, have a story from your work situation, um, then I would go that route. Um, it also depends on if your organization is sending you there to talk about organizational issues versus um, bills that may relate, relate to your, your personal life. Yeah. And it kind of, I will also say some nonprofits are a little squeamish about uh, advocacy work, which you are perfectly allowed to do as a nonprofit, but, but some leaders in some nonprofits are really a little hesitant because they don't know where the boundaries are. Um, and you can reach out to policy and advocacy and there are other resources that can help clarify that for folks. Um, but that is um, kind of a little bit of a barrier for some nonprofits, just not knowing uh, what is appropriate for them to do. And generally speaking, um, talking about issue is fine. Um, you cannot be partisan in the sense that you can't endorse a candidate um, or a party um, if you're representing a, a nonprofit, but you can talk about issues. So I hope that's helpful for us. Awesome. Um, and then Kim, did you want to take over best practices or? Um... It, would it would help, help if, if I had, had my, if I wanted to unmute here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> are, are people still, still getting, getting an echo though? Because I might need to find my headphones if that's the case. Yeah, I'm hearing the echo on my end. Okay. Um, right. And Jill's saying yes in the chat. Let me... Okay, how is that for folks? Hmm, it's still, oh, so, okay, other people say it's great. I'm gonna defer to the people. So. <laughs> we should <laughs> always defer to the people. <laughs> yes. All right, let's, let's talk, talk about, about best practices uh, with storytelling. So, um, Always, always, always be your authentic self. Um, you don't have to put on airs to talk to 
uh, an elected official. Um, uh, I and I mentioned they are human beings as well. And I will also say, so point out they work for you. So you do have some power in this relationship. Uh, so just be you. Uh, next is to, um, again, we talked about this earlier, just share what you're comfortable with. You don't have to lay out your whole life history, not that you have time for that anyway. And I would say, think about what's most germane uh, to the message uh, related to the, the bill or the priority that you are there to, to advocate for. So next, uh, always keep your audience in mind, and this goes whether it's uh, storytelling for a situation like this or storytelling uh, for anything else. Um, we know that um, elected officials are on the go. Lots of people want to talk to them, and that's why we say this is more of a sort of an elevator pitch kind of environment where you only have about a minute to give yourself about a minute. Uh, you might get more time than that. There may be some follow-up questions, but I think you go into this situation knowing you got 30 seconds to a minute just to, to get the, the, the bare bones of what you want and to get that ask in. Uh, like this, always want to know what is it that you actually want me to do. So always remember that. Keep it short and sweet, talk about that. Uh, make sure you have an app so I can buy all of that. See how I did that very quick? <laughs> so just go through them again. Be your authentic self. Share only what you're comfortable sharing. Always keep your audience in mind. Keep it short and sweet, as someone I uh, used to say, land of the plane. You know, some of us got a lot of words that we want to use. You don't have time for that. And then make sure that you have a concrete ask. And as Ayana said, it's a yes, no situation. It's not, what do you think about? Or what if we did this? It's like, no. Will you support such and such bill? Yes or no? So those are some best practices uh, for storytelling, especially in an advocacy space. Awesome, y'all. Um, so uh, we're kind of moving into the last bits of uh, of this session. And Diego, if you could go ahead and start popping in the ah, already done policy priorities for AFC 2023. Um, if you have not done this yet, I encourage you all um, to please visit the link and, and show or uh, see uh, what policies that we're trying to advocate for. Um, we'll shortly go through them now. Um, not going to go through too much of that information. Um, it is a lot to go through, and we have a webinar for that as well. <clears throat> but if any of you have any questions at this moment, um, as we go through them, uh, we might be able to kind of address some of those questions. Um, so the first one we have, and we saw this earlier, um, is H uh, House Bill 1349 or Senate Bill 209, strengthening and protecting Illinois' HIV funding infrastructure. The reps for that, uh, the sponsors are Representative Lakeisha Collins and Senator Mike Simmons. Um, then we also have House Bill 2481 or Senate Bill 2241, which is a housing funding omnibus. And the sponsors for that are Michelle Musman and Senator Adrian Johnson. And then we have Healthy Illinois for All, which is House Bill 1570 or Senate Bill 122. Uh, the sponsors you'll be looking for here are Lisa Hernandez and Senator Omar Aquino. Um, and then the last one, at least for this slide, is uh, Health Insurance Rate Review and Affordability, Senate Bill 1912, uh, which is sponsored by Senators uh, Laura Fine and Representative Bob Morgan. Um, and then we've got some last three here. We have the Healthcare Provider Cultural Competency Bill, which I spoke of earlier, um, which is House Bill 2280 or Senate Bill 2427. Sponsors for this are Representative Dagmar Avalar and Senator Ram Villavalam. Uh, we have HB or House Bill 2, uh, Senate Bill 78, uh, which is the Overdose Prevention Sites Pilot. Um, the sponsors for this are Representative LaShawn Ford and Senator Sarah Feigenholz. Um, and then lastly, House Bill 1286 or SB 126, Gender Inclusive Multiple Occupancy Restrooms. Sponsors for this are Representative Katie Stewart and Senator Selena Villanueva. Um, 
I have a big ask for folks if you want to um, yeah, advocate for the gender inclusive multiple occupancy restroom one, uh, my heart goes out to you. Um, I think especially considering the state that we're in, in terms of all the anti-trans legislation across the country. And as many of you probably know, bathrooms were the start um, of all this kind of anti-trans hate. Well, I wouldn't say all the start of it, but um, it was definitely a big one in terms of the media. Um, and and uh, we also found out that uh, Representative Katie Stewart was also receiving um, a lot of uh, threats and, and um, verbal violence uh, for sponsoring this bill. So um, this one definitely needs a lot of support. Um, and then also, of course, I'm just gonna, uh, the ones that are for our AFC folks and the, the heart of the work that we do, strengthening and protecting Illinois' HIV funding infrastructure. I think that's a really big one. Um, and as, again, as many of you probably know, without the money, without the funding, uh, we can't continue doing the work that we do. Um, and it's super important to get um, not only the funding, but the resources that we need um, uh, for the work and for the folks who need it. All right, um, moving quite along. Um, and I don't know, I'm gonna check the chat really quick. Okay, and then Kim says there are two numbers for each bill because bills have to be passed in the House and the Senate before they can go to the governor for signature. Um, and then Diego also put in a, a link to, um, if you wanna check out, if you'd like to email representatives for the gender inclusive bathroom bill. So thank you, Diego. Um, could you also pop in the link for uh, finding your reps? So I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing really quick. If you have not already done this before, I'm gonna do a really quick tutorial with you all. Um, it's very, very simple. Um, let me see if I can find it. There we are. Can you all see that okay? Awesome, getting thumbs up. Um, all right, so if you click the link, you will go, you'll find this website. Um, it's, it's a full map, um, obviously right here, find my elected representative at the top right. And so you'll just wanna put your address in. I'm just gonna put in AFC, um, 200 West Monroe Street, Chicago, there you go. And then it populates. Um, once you put that in, um, it didn't do it for this, but the map will kind of uh, zoom in to that specific point. Um, and then you've got all these um, titles here, right? And so what we're looking for is at the bottom uh, right here, state senator and state representative. So if you lived within this district, um, your state senator would be Maddie Hunter. And then your representative would be Sonia M. Harper. Um, and again, you have all these, um, all the details here, and you can also see their website. Um, each each representative and senator has their own website for you to kind of look through. Um, all right. So the reason I did that was because um, we are now going to give you all a little bit of time. Um, go back here. All this tech stuff. So we're going to give some time for reflection and to give you all time to. Um, find your representatives and to look through some of those policy priorities that are in the chat now um, to choose if you haven't already. Um, and then if you'd like to use some of this time, maybe start crafting a little bit of that story. Um, we're going to give, we're at about 6.17 and I do want to give some time for, um, for some questions. So we'll give you all five minutes. I'm going to start the timer now. Um, and if you have any questions at this point, um, we can also just ask them in the chat and we'll We'll address there. Um, but for now, five minutes on the clock starts now.
Hey y'all, I'm seeing the chat and I put it in the chat as well, but I'm gonna go ahead and just go back to that first slide so that y'all see that in case you all are drafting it up. All right, y'all, we're about a few seconds. So go ahead and wrap up if you're writing anything. Um, wrap up the thoughts if you need to wrap the thoughts up. Um, and we're going to go ahead and enter into Q&A. Um, let's see. And then I'm seeing in the chat, please make this slide bigger screen as you spotlighted. Um, let me see. I can't make this bigger. Let me see if I can. Yeah, there's no way for me to there's no way for me to make it bigger, but um, we will Most definitely be sending get this the slide, slide deck, deck, right? Yeah. Yes, was right about to say that. Okay. Thanks, Kim. Um, cool. Um, Jill, in terms of the name you put in the chat, I I would not be able to advise on that. Um, so I'm sorry, I can't be of any help there. I think, I think I've heard, heard it is. is Hon Han, but I could be wrong. <laughs> oh. Aces um, put Representative Win. Oh, I would, I would have been, been way wrong. wrong. <laughs> Aces, Aces would know. Aces, Aces has to talk to these folks all the time. So they yes. can that. Aces. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I see your rep too. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Any other questions coming up? Any comments? Maybe things people want to share? Feel free to um, raise your hand and we can unmute as well. I have a question for, for you all and you can put your response in the chat is if this has been helpful for you as you think about how to talk to Russ, and there is a question. Oh, thank you, Solomon. I see a hand raised. There we go. Zach, I think you can ask your question. Yeah, hi, thanks. It's just about uh, starting the conversation with the legislator. If you ever uh, would suggest starting with the bottom line up front, so to speak, where 
you go right to, you know, I'm here today to talk about Senate Bill 123 and then move into the uh, storytelling and then conclude with the ask. Thank you. That's spot on. Um, yeah, yeah. You, you, absolutely. And when, when we, we go, go down, down for Advocacy Day, they, they know why we're there, there right? So, so you, you can, can jump right on in. Um, and, and I know in the past, uh, in my past experience with Advocacy Day, sometimes folks have been a little nervous. So I do a little introduction. Uh, and I'm sure my colleagues will do something too to help warm you up and prime you for the conversation. But they know why we're there. So I think getting right to the point is uh, perfectly acceptable. Thanks for the question too, Zach. Any other questions? We're getting some more feedback from your questions. Oh, yes. so. Okay, very good. Good refresher, very helpful. Icebreaker was fun and universal. Yes. Okay, good. All right. Any other questions, comments? Of course, this won't be the last time you'll obviously see us for the day of, but you've got us four minutes. <laughs> well, you, you can, can go, go ahead, ahead and give our commercial, commercial for that. <laughs> the next, the next webinar. <laughs> our commercial, I love that, Kim. That was, that's so great. All right, y'all. So as we're waiting for more questions, if they're um, coming in, um, just going to share this. Let's see. Right, this. Oh, gosh. PowerPoint and Zoom and just all the things. Anyway. Um, all right, y'all. Um, thank you so much for attending uh, today's webinar. Um, in a little bit, I'm about to I will pop in a post webinar survey for you all to take. Um, and then this is just a reminder to register for all Advocacy Day 2023 webinars. We have one more. Um, and the next one is going to be Advocacy Day uh, Nuts and Bolts, what to expect. Um, it's gonna be a really good one, especially if this is your first time. Um, and that's gonna be Wednesday, April 12th, 2023 from 5.30 to 6.30 PM Zoom webinar as we've done tonight. tonight. Um, all right, and then I'm gonna actually, I need to stop sharing so I can get the link. I actually just threw it in the chat, Ayala. Oh, perfect. Thank you so much, Diego. It's always so helpful to have like other folks on the call <laughs> who can do these things. Lonnie has a note in the chat. Uh, I noticed when I put in zip versus address by Senate and, and representative was different. I learned that you have to use your address. Um, so that's right. Use your, use your address. Awesome. Thanks, Lonnie. All right, y'all. Well, um, if there aren't any questions or other standing comments, reactions, um, I'm gonna go ahead and call it. Um, thank you all again so much for attending today. We look forward so much to seeing you all on the day of and, and uh, advocating on these bills and, and speaking with our electeds. It's gonna be such a great day. Um, we will see you all next week and hope you all have a great evening. Thank you, everybody. Have a good evening.